Welcome to the Complex Nanophotonics Lab. Here we investigate light-matter interaction and we are trying to enhance the amount of light emitted by molecules by nanostructuring that we pattern by lithography. We also work on enhancing lasing um, through coupling of emitters in, in random structures. Um, and in, in a random laser, the lasing is enhanced by scattering the type of lasers that I'm working on are, net, are formed by a network of integrated waveguides where light is propagating in the waveguides and they're all coupled together in a, in a complex network. We probe this by exciting through another laser and the aim is to make an integrated light source on a chip that we can control the emission of um, by uh, ma manipulating how we probe this laser we can make it lays a different wavelengths and send that light in different directions. Um, welcome to the Nano Analysis Lab. Here we specialize in the characterization and analysis of materials for energy and healthcare applications. In our group we work a lot on solar cells and um, light sensors and then we also work with sensors for medical observation and diagnosis. This is a Raman spectrometer. We use this to measure the molecular vibrations of polar and small molecules. It can tell us lots of information about what's happening right down on the nanoscale and how the polymers are packing together or how they are interacting with other layers in our devices. One of the things we specialise in our group is doing in situ measurements. So shown here we can measure the Raman spectroscopy whilst under electrical bias or whilst under gas exposure for our sensing. We can also do Raman spectroscopy at the same time as the AFM uh, using this sample stage here. This is the AFM, which is an atomic force microscopy. We use this to measure the topography of our samples. The sample is put in here and we lower down a, ver a very fine tip onto the surface of the sample and this measures the surface, giving us really beautiful images of topography which can really help us understand the morphology of our samples. This is a fluoro spectrometer, so we use this to do photoluminescence measurements and also time correlated single photon counting. We can do this uh, with thin films mostly, just in, in the sample chamber for steady state. We also have this cryostat, which means that we can measure at uh, very low temperatures and we can control the temperature right up to around about 300 degrees. This is our air photo emission and Kelvin probe. In here we measure the energetics of our materials. So we put thin films on the sample stage in here and then we lower the gold tip down above our sample and this vibrates above the sample and helps us measure the HOMO level and the work function and we do this especially for our blends so we can understand how the energetics of blends are working together. Hi, I'm David Mann. Welcome to the Nanofabrication Lab. These are our two electron beam lithography systems. We use these to pattern into electron beam resist to make stencils uh, to deposit materials into to make our samples. They have resolutions of down to around 20 nanometers with 10 nanometer gap sizes. Then the main workforce is producing samples for the department. This system is performing electron beam lithography onto a substrate. It's currently deflecting the electron beam over the sample to form shapes into the resist. We'll later use those shapes as a stencil to deposit material onto with our thermal evaporator. This is the thermal evaporation system. This is where we deposit the material into the patterns that we create with electron beam lithography. We're currently depositing chromium onto a substrate. Over here you can see the deposition rate that we're getting from the chromium. And in here you can see the glow from the chromium being deposited. Hello, my name's Chris Phillips. Um, I'm semiconductor physicist, but turned imager. We do a lot of work with imaging in the mid infrared, a lot of it for cancer detection, in fact. Uh, we've got two projects involving this piece of gear. It's just arrived, it cost us 150,000 uh, euros. And we can use it to look inside cells. We can see with a resolution of a few nanometers what's going on inside a cell. And because we're working in a part of the spectrum called the mid infrared, we can get chemical information about that cell, we can see how its chemistry has changed when it became diseased with cancer, and we can also see where drugs stick inside that cell. And that's a big help for people who are trying to work out new drugs. Okay, this is the technique we're using, we're calling it SNOM, 
Um, it was developed for looking at microscopic transistors in, in semiconductors, but we've developed a, a way of looking at cells with it. You have an extremely sharp tip here, and you drag it over the, the, the section of the cell, and you illuminate it with a mid-infrared laser, the quantum cascade laser that we developed. Um, and without going into the details, you can get incredibly sharp pictures. These ones here have got a resolution. This one is 10 nanometers. The best we've seen is 2 nanometers. That's actually better than the electron microscopy. Um, and the things you can do with this, if you, if you look at a piece of ordinary tissue, if you took a slice of, of me, uh, all these features here correspond to vibrations of atoms in the molecules that make us up. Um, and chemists know what wavelength corresponds to what atom, so you can actually measure the chemical changes in the tissue, particularly when t cancer happens. We see an increase in the DNA in the cell and a reduction in the purity, and that tells you that cancer is happening and it's a way of diagnosing cancer. Um, the other very interesting thing we can do is look at where drugs are. So this black line is the absorption peak of a particular cancer drug, and the red lines are spectra that we've taken inside a cell, these hot spots here, that tell us just where that drug is sticking. And as I said, that's a huge help for people who are developing new drugs and new uh, vaccines.